Hey, this is Ramon, Channels Alpha 4, and we're going to do Genesis 3. So, Genesis 3 is a little, is a little shorter than the other ones, at least in the density. And it's, uh, man and woman has the unspoken option to eat of the fruit and live, but never takes it. This is very interesting to me. It's never addressed until after the original sin. But the fact that God says you can eat from any fruit in the garden except the tree of life, I mean, except the tree of knowledge, means that you can eat from the tree of life. So humanity has the option to become immortal. And to me, this is a great metaphor for how man will always choose the pursuit of knowledge over the pursuit of safety. And by man, I mean humanity. Mankind will always choose the pursuit of knowledge over the pursuit of safety. And this has been true forever, from the explorers to that crazy friend of yours who just wants to go past what is known. I mean, going straight into the unknown and into the danger. Uh, then, after that happens, and you get the talking snake and all that stuff, you also get the, the punishments. And the punishments here are interesting because they are both individual and group punishments. So you're not just punishing the person, you're also punishing the entire world. The entire, every relationship is affected by one's mistakes. So yes, it affects yourself, but it also affects everything else and it also affects the future. So I think that's a great way to think of mistakes is just how dangerous mistakes are and how your choices, good or bad, will echo through the generations, and through time. It's just really interesting to think about what you're doing today, about how that was influenced by what people did in the past, even hundreds or thousands of years ago. Like, it's just an interesting thing. Like, what the time limit is on the domino effect is, I don't know, something to think about. And then there is a hint at an older tradition here, though, as well, with the language toward the end. But that can be explained away with the intimation that it refers to the heavenly host, uh, the Christian trinity, are uh, just the writer or, or the storyteller using an, an, uh, uh, an artistic flair. But basically, God uses the word us, or our, our uh, we and this it shows up a few times showed up earlier and it's going to show up again later um, I don't know uh, there are other religions uh, that are much older uh, than than this in fact I I did this earlier that's pretty much the end of that I did this earlier so this is a little timeline so Four thousand five hundred BC is about the time civilization begins. Okay, and th those are the first villages and settlements. Uh, that's when Mesopotamia is settled. Uh, Summer uh, with uh, Garu, the king of Kush, shows up at about three thousand six hundred BC. Egypt with the Scorpion King starts off at about three thousand two hundred. Arcadia with uh, Sargon starts at about 2300 uh, BC. Uh, in India, uh, civilization as we would understand it uh, starts at 2300 BC. Babylon starts at 2300. Um, Nubia starts at about 2000 BC. Uh, Kush or Ethiopia starts at about 880 BC. China is settled sometime around between uh, 2,800 and 2,200 BC. So that's that's when every all the ancient cultures are are happening. Uh, even the Hittite Empire, uh, Hetzia, starts off at 1,600 BC. Well, the thing about that is uh, the Battle of Kadesh. The first time there's even a chance of seen Israelites in history is 1274 BC. 
the first time that they're mentioned, like actually mentioned in history, is in the Menapath Steel. And that's from Egypt, and that's in 1208 BC. The Bible itself doesn't even touch literal history until we get to King David at sometime between 140, about 1040 BC or 970 BC. So sometime, so between 970 and 1000 is when King David shows up. But the actual text in the Bible, the quote unquote historical text, you don't actually see corresponding texts with other uh, empires until you get to the, the Moabite steel. And that is in 840 BC. So you're talking about anywhere from 2000 to 300 years, 300 to, to 2000 years between the actual birth of civilization and the beginnings of Israelite civilization. So they trace their prehistory to uh, Ur and to the Babylonian Empire. Uh, the, uh, they trace their second history from Egypt uh, with the building of the, uh, around the building of the pyramids and Ramses II. But the pyramids start around 2680. 6 BC to about 2566 and exactly when the first pyramid was built and the last one was built I don't I don't have that on here but that puts them even if you put their origins with the building of the pyramids that still gives them about a thousand years of wandering the desert before they show up as a civilization so they are a nomadic tribe no matter what history whether it's their own whether it's Babylonian interpretation, uh, the Egyptian interpretation, no matter which interpretation you're coming from, they're a nomadic tribe in the desert for a very long time. So it makes sense that they would be pulling narratives and would be subject to the uh, pagan or polytheistic religions of the cultures, the major cultures around them, and keeping the tribe pure from that and, and keeping your people uh, differentiated and, and separated out from from being assimilated into these much greater communities it was would have been an incredibly hard challenge and for the priestly group and for the the ruling class it, it would be immensely important um, there are ideas that the uh, the great patriarchs are actually dynasties or stuff like that. But if you actually look at the ancient kings list of Mesopotamia, they correspond very nicely with the uh, founders of the Israelite nation. And for instance, nobody really bats an eye at the Mesopotamian king list or the Egyptian kings list before the Scorpion king. But those numbers are incredibly exaggerated. You have kings ruling for thousands of years, which is clearly impossible. Yet, with the Bible, people will hold that up, hold this primitive uh, oral tradition up to the same historical standards as a modern textbook. And yet, when the very sources those textbooks use for the history that we know are never doubted the way that people will doubt the Bible, which I don't understand that. I get it that it's a, uh, there's some, you know, people who have a problem with religion in general, and that's part of the reason why. But, look, the no one lived a thousand years, you know what I mean? And the idea that they were dynasties doesn't really work out if you consider the fact that they named their sons which makes the dynasty kind of idea kind of fall apart. But just remember that this is a primitive text told in oral tradition to explain things well before the advent of science even existed. There is no science, there is no history yet. Okay? Herodias isn't even born yet to create history. So don't hold it up to our standards. 
look at this as a theological polemic text and take it from that point and look for the deeper truths and look at the poetry and then when it gets history somewhere and I think it's in Second Kings when we get to history then we can debate whether or not stuff is factual until then just you know enjoy the story and look for the deeper meaning that applies to your life Peace.